this is Ragboy. I'm out here on a beautiful day on uh, Lake Oroville. And I'm out here on my 2007 Taiga 24VE. Um, it has a 5.7 liter GM Vortec engine. Puts out 340 horsepower by marine power. Now, I say that because we're talking about carbon monoxide today. And um, this is a very standard motor. And the year that my boat is, is you know, a later model boat. Doesn't have a catalytic converter. And um, we're out here with our CO meter that was loaned to us from Larry Mann from Fresh Air Exhaust. And uh, we're doing measurements all around the boat while we're driving. We're driving for hours at a time with the meter in different places and learning where carbon monoxide builds up. And we're testing at different speeds and different wind conditions. And um, hopefully we're going to compile all that for you. And we're going to do it before and after um, we install a fresh air exhaust system. So we proceeded over the next several days to take measurements on our boat. Let's make sure we understand how carbon monoxide is measured and what levels are dangerous and how it kills. Carbon monoxide is measured in ppm or parts per million. So if I said the carbon monoxide level was at 500 parts per million, that means that for every 1 million molecules of air, there are 500 molecules of carbon monoxide. What levels are dangerous and can kill you? This is not a simple question to answer due to several factors such as the overall health of the person being affected. For instance, a child, a pregnant mother with a fetus, or someone with a heart condition may be at greater risk. In my research, I have found some guidelines for danger levels. Most people will not experience any symptoms from exposure to carbon monoxide at levels under 70 ppm for short periods of time. As carbon monoxide levels increase and remain above 70 ppm, symptoms become more noticeable and can include headache, fatigue, and nausea. As sustained carbon monoxide concentrations above 150 to 200 ppm, disorientation, unconsciousness, and death are possible. So mild exposure would be in the range of 50 to 100 ppm and take several hours of exposure to start feeling the symptoms. At sustained levels of 200 ppm or more, you can die, but it still can take a few hours. When levels start to reach the 800 plus ppm level, you can become disoriented, faint, lose muscle control in minutes, not hours. Levels this high can lead to death fairly quickly. The undiluted exhaust from a boat without a catalytic converter, which mine and most boats do not have, can reach 7,000 ppm. However, you would not breathe anywhere near this level unless you put your face directly behind the open exhaust of your boat. So how does carbon monoxide kill? 1,000 ppm is still only one-tenth of one percent of the air. The reason it kills is illustrated by this image. Carbon monoxide molecules attach to the red blood cells and replace oxygen cells. The carbon monoxide can block the oxygen from your red blood cells which can damage tissues and result in death. So what does this mean in your boat? If you wakeboard or wake surf, you probably have a similar engine and exhaust to mine. At speeds over 15 miles per hour or so, basically approaching wakeboarding speeds, there is little to no danger of carbon monoxide poisoning. The air traveling over and around the boat at that speed will dissipate the carbon monoxide quickly and levels should not become dangerous. It seems pretty obvious that running your engine while not moving is not a smart thing to do. Even in the open air, the carbon monoxide will accumulate, especially around the rear of the boat. This image from the Coast Guard shows that. When idling, levels can become deadly above 800 ppm, especially at the swim deck area. But what about at slower speeds like when we wake surf? Depending on wind and other factors, the station wagon effect may occur at slower speeds and is likely to occur even when traveling at 9 to 13 miles per hour. Here is an image from the Coast Guard that illustrates the station wagon effect. Even moving, the carbon monoxide gas can accumulate at the rear of the boat and reach mild to medium exposure levels, especially when riding bow high and rear corner down as we do in this video. We have been taking measurements at all of these locations marked by the arrows in this video and we are taking these measurements over the period of several days in various conditions and during sessions of at least 30 minutes at a time to get the best results. So what have we learned from our testing and measurements? Wake surfing is safe even without any fresh air exhaust or other means of diverting the exhaust. We could never reach levels above 35 ppm at the wake surfer position no matter how hard we tried. The only time we were able to get a reading in the 30s was when surfing during a tight right turn which was very unusual. The reading stayed in the 5 to 10 ppm range 99% of the time in the wake surfing position going from just behind the swim deck 
to the far rear end of the pocket. Riding on your swim deck or your sun deck, however, at slower speeds can expose you to unsafe levels of carbon monoxide, which we measured at ranges from 10 all the way to 300 parts per million. The higher levels were not sustained for very long, but we definitely were able to reproduce conditions where we sustained levels in the 100 to 150 ppm range, which can make you nauseous and dizzy in less than an hour. The surprising thing for me was that these higher levels can even be reached while sitting in the ballast boy seat, as I like to call it, which is the far rear corner in a V-drive. So what is teak surfing? And isn't that the same as wake surfing and aren't both deadly due to carbon monoxide? No. Let me show you what teak surfing is and why it is so dangerous. Okay, now um, I'm going to do something here that uh, you don't want to do. This is called teak surfing. This is when you grab onto the back of your swim deck and idle at five miles an hour. I see people do it faster, which is a little crazy, which I'm not going to do. But I'm going to go at about five miles an hour, and I got a life jacket on. And most of the time, you see people do this, they're not wearing a life jacket, which is very stupid. Um, but I'm going to wear a life jacket, which is probably semi stupid. I shouldn't be doing this, but I really want to get a measurement, and I want people to see exactly what teak surfing is and wake surfing, and how big of a difference there is. There, there's, there's no comparison. So, RG, uh, let's get the boat started. Thomas, hand me the meter. Okay, I'm about to lose my shorts here. I can thoroughly smell the exhaust, and the meter looks like it's up at around eight or nine hundred parts per million. I've only been doing this for about thirty seconds. But I think I've gone far enough to know that this is definitely dangerous and definitely a carbon monoxide risk. Cut it! So here's our fresh air exhaust system laid out on a table after we unbox it. It's fairly simple. Here's Larry. He's kind of being a dork right here, but he's basically going to show you how it's going to mount up to the back of the boat, attached to the swim deck, and its basic function is to divert the exhaust into the prop wash. That's it. It's that simple. Now let's get a look at it under the water. You can see the rudder just off to the right and the wake plate between the rudder and the diverter tube that comes down. And in a second here we're going to start up the engine and you're going to see the exhaust shoot out the diverter tube and up under the swim deck. This gives you an idea of just how much exhaust is coming out of that engine. And In a second we're going to pan up here a little and you can look you can see anybody on top of that deck or right on the back of the boat, that exhaust is just going all around the swim deck and straight up right to the back of the boat. Now there we go. We just put it in gear and you can see the exhaust is now being pushed back away from the back of the boat and out into the prop wash behind the boat. Now we're only idling here with the motor in gear. The faster you go, the more that exhaust is completely channeled back behind the boat and safely away from anybody inside. So after installing our fresh air exhaust system, we took more measurements starting with RJ wake surfing behind the boat to see if the levels were affected. We did not measure any noticeable difference in levels from the wake surfer position after we installed the fresh air exhaust system. Wake surfing was just as safe before as it was after installing the fresh air exhaust. Our fresh air exhaust is on and uh, installed properly and working very well. Um, I'm sitting in my ballast boy seat like I normally do. We're going 11 miles an hour. As you can see, this thing hasn't moved from zero. Now that I have the fresh air exhaust on, I've been keeping this thing right here, right in the area that I used to get real high readings, and I got nothing. This fresh air exhaust is working fantastic. I am definitely sold. And, um, fresh air exhaust is definitely not needed while you surf. Surfing is safe whether you have one installed or not. But sitting in the back of your boat or sitting on your deck, it's definitely necessary. And everybody should get one if you have a chance. Okay, so for two solid weeks, we basically had a carbon monoxide detector either attached to me, attached to RJ, or attached to the deck on the back of my boat. And we've been driving around, taking measurements everywhere. And what have we learned? Well, I'm going to list several facts and figures and things for you to absorb. But you'll just forget them. So I'm not going to do that. So what I'm going to do is, one, we're going to have a page on our Wake9 site. If you go to wake9.com, 
slash CO kills. And we're going to put a lot of information, a lot of facts, and we're going to keep accumulating it there. Fresh air exhaust is totally worth it. If you haven't got one for your boat, go get one. I highly recommend it. It's going to make the back of your boat and sitting on the back a pleasure. However, always keep this in mind. The fresh air exhaust does nothing for you when the boat is stopped. It only works when the, pro when the prop is engaged. So when you're idling, turn your boat off. Especially if you have people back here. The fresh air exhaust isn't going to do anything for you, and you're still going to have dangerous levels in the back. Be safe and keep wake surfing.